Stephanie Schlesinger, your host for the next chapter. And today, on this very cold day in March, uh, I am at Equinox Terrace to do something which will warm your heart, which is celebrating a dear friend of mine, Essie Crookshanks, 104th birthday. So, happy birthday, Essie! Dear Essie, happy birthday! say 104, but I haven't figured it out yet. I, I was born in 1913. 1913, yeah, so Did we'd have to take 2017 and de subtract no, 1913. Oh my gosh, she's right, Mom. I then told her she looked beautiful. The only time I ever looked beautiful in my life. Dad was taken by your beauty. See? Well, actually, we all um, sort of moved in, to, uh, moved to Vermont um, from various places. Oh. Um, we grew up in Long Island, uh, but we all moved to Vermont, I would say, within a window of five years. Uh -huh. So all of us were um, pretty much around when Mom and Dad um, bought the house. We moved up in 38, didn't we? No, I was married in 38. Married in 38. No, yeah. Essie... Um, we moved up in 68. Had been, um, I was, I think, the first of all of us to move to Vermont, and I worked at Killington. Uh-huh. Um, Probably in um, around that time, 19, yeah. just before that time, 1967. Uh huh. Got it. Yeah. And then um, Mom bought that place in Dorset. Mm -hmm. And when did um, Essie and Reeve move up to Vermont, Mom? I think before we did. Yeah, maybe just around that same oh, time. Okay. Robin is our first sort of almost real Vermonter. Oh, um, uh -huh. she was quite young. Okay. And she went to the she was seven. She was seven. Ah. And we have another sister as well. Yeah. Um, older than Robin. Uh huh. And uh, she Nancy. Lives, Nancy. Nancy. And she lives in Brandon with her husband. Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you one that sticks out in my mind. Uh -huh. um, when we were growing up in Garden City, and I was um, maybe three or four years old, and Essie a year older, mm -hmm. um, we lived in my father's father's house, my father being in the service uh -huh. and um, uh, probably in California at that time. Mm -hmm. So we lived in, with my grandfather, who was a very, very kind, decent, um, unprejudiced kind of man. I'm talking about Grandpa, mm -hmm. Grandpa Crookshank. But in those days, um, the world was quite different, mm -hmm. and people used words. Mm -hmm. that were highly critical of uh, ethnically and uh, uh, of different um, religions and races, and they used those words uh -huh. um, really without thinking mm -hmm. about them, you know, that they were, might cause hurt. Mm -hmm. And my mommy mm -hmm. confronted her father-in-law. Oh, good for you. And said, Dad, we are going to leave this house if you continue to use those words. And as I say, he was not a mean-spirited Who used soul. the words? Grandpa Crookshanks. This is one of my first memories, Mom. Oh, and I was using bad no, words? No, you were not using bad oh, words. Good. You were chastising Grandpa oh. for using those words in front of us kids. <laughs> he never did. Well, Mom, it wasn't out of meanness. But he, everybody used those words in, in those days. Mm -hmm. And it would be unthinkable mm -hmm. to do that uh -huh. um, nowadays. But this one, one of my early memories, confronted my grandfather and said, Dad, don't use those words in front of the he kids. He never used a foul word his no, whole life. No, it wasn't I foul, know. Mom. It was derogatory. Oh. Of, um, and, and he didn't do it out of meanness. Yeah. Mom, he wasn't a mean man. I, I, want to, I can't stress that enough. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but Mom set the tone for uh -huh. our upbringing uh -huh. with that. And we were brought up to believe those kinds of things. I then asked Essie about her calling the President of the United States. 
Doing more oh, sure. I call them all the time. Actually, on the average of um, once a week, once every 10 days. Yeah, nobody did. I didn't yeah. like it. The, uh, the Gulf War was going on. She wasn't crazy about that. Yeah. And um, anything that um, was degrading of the environment. Uh -huh. um, Mom, you would call the president about certain things. I that, call him about a lot of stuff. Yeah, it. things that she didn't like were happening environmentally. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would, I would say those, those two issues. You know, it didn't do any good though. So I gave it. Tell Annie about some of your hobbies when you're growing up with the skating and so forth. Well, all I did was figure skate. She figure skater. Yeah. Uh -huh. And loved it and um, would take all of us. Uh -huh. out to the rink and we'd run around like hockey players and she'd be doing figuring. Essie, the last time I was here, you told me that every time you go to bed at night, it's such a wonderful mystery because you never know if you're going to end up in heaven or be well, someplace else. And he said that you, when you slept, you didn't know where you were going, whether you were going to be in bed in the morning or whether you're going to be in heaven or anywhere. Oh, but well, who I, knows? I would say that that's true of any of it. I have to tell you that my mother has an uncanny knack and has had it all her life of reversing words, saying them backwards in whole sentences. Can you say I like that stuff, I'm like, we. What does that mean? I can talk backwards, can you? You want to sing that song backwards, Mom? Which is the one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see any of you 45-year-olds do that. Right. I can say anything back what you want. <laughs> got an eight out of... 100. I didn't get very good marks in school. But she could speak backwards, That's which right. was more than her teacher. Um, what do you like uh, about every day when you wake up in the morning? And oh. um, what gives you... Because the sun's out, it's a pretty day. <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm going to get up and take a walk, maybe, or go skating or something. And don't forget your kids, Mom. We're going to pick kids up for lunch. Kids don't anymore. <laughs> we, um, we have lunch with Mom on the average of every other day during the week. You know, that's and, incredible. Um, and we, uh, we're, a tight <laughs> we're a tight family, mm -hmm. thanks to this lady. Uh-huh. That's true. And my, I... and my father. Uh -huh. And my, grandpa my grandfather. Grandfather and everybody. We, uh, we've... Uh, um, <laughs> As I, I, I would say, um, and I don't want to take, steal the thunder here, but I would say um, I, there are some writers um, who speak of, um, when they're talking metaphysical things, that um, we come back. You know, we come back. After we die, then we come back. Reincarnation. Yeah, okay, reincarnation of a kind. And I'm hoping uh -huh. that that's not true for me uh -huh. because the chances of ending up in this situation with this mother and my father and my sisters uh -huh. is so remote. Uh -huh. I don't like the chances, so uh -huh. I hope we end it. And I just that, we're very fortunate, Mom, aren't we, to have us all here? Mm, very. To, yeah. to be you all here. Essie. We won't let you do that, will we, Mom? What? Let you be alone and feeling lonely. No. We won't let you do that. It's not allowed. Now, Andy, to come to your birthday. Sure. All right. That's it. Yeah. Mm. I want Don't forget the present. <laughs> oh, God! I thought I was... You should say stuff like that. Terrific. Just terrific. Don't forget the present. Yes. No birthday, no present. Yeah. Right. We try it? Do you want to try this again, Mommy? What is it? The spoon trick on your nose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Blow into it. Get a lot of moisture on it. No, put more moisture on it, Mommy. Three or four times. At Basin Harbor, where we used to go as a family, uh -huh. we would all be sitting around the table, and Mom learned this little trick from somewhere, and somebody would be making a very important speech uh -huh. about this and that. She'd do that and say, good point. Okay. How long do you want to live in this world? How long? Yeah. Forever. There you go. <laughs> Happy birthday, Essie, and thank you for being such a fabulous role model for us all.